What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart. Today, I'll be breaking down game three of the NBA Finals between Denver and Miami. We have a showdown slate here on DraftKings where I'll be talking through my favorite spend, or excuse me, my favorite captain plays as well as my favorite utility plays, giving you guys some early look core plays as well as talking over some strategies to get different from the field. All the good stuff in this video and breakdown. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Do really appreciate all the likes, guys. It really helps on my channel, and I just really great, really appreciate it. And let's get into this breakdown. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at HeartDFS. Uh, and then check out all, you know, check out my description for everything linked down below. You can find all the links there. But right now for this game, three point spread favored to the Nuggets, uh, two 14 and a half game total. So the game total has dropped a little bit since game one and game two. I know game one was 219. I don't know what two, game two was. I would assume around the same. But now it's dropped down by about four points from game one to game three. Or excuse me, yeah, about four and a half points from game one to game three. So. Maybe a little bit less scoring in this game here. Three-point spread favorite to the Nuggets. Obviously, we're playing this game in Miami, so should be a good, good one to watch. So starting off here, we'll go, we'll go over the Denver side with Jokic at 15.2K. It, 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 you know, obviously, there's only two teams left. It's the finals, so there's not much news to go over besides, you know, if someone got, you know, in foul trouble, if someone got benched, you know, kind of just touching on that stuff. But for Jokic... As I said, most people are going to play him uh, in the captain. Like he's usually floating between 25 to 35 percent owned in the captain. It's just because he has such insane upside. Even his bad games, um, which are not bad, but you know, DFS wise, his bad games are like 55 to 60 fancy points. It's just unreal. So it's one of those things. If you want to get different, you you put Jokic in the utility spot, and then you get you just get different at the captain, or you get super super different in you feed Jokic, but obviously that does not feel great because even in his terrible games, he'll get a triple double and still go for 55, 60 fancy points, which most of the time that will get him in the optimal lineup unless, you know, he just has an, an average game. Let's say he just goes for 50, 45 to 50 fancy points. And then guys like Jamal Murray, MPJ, Aaron Gordon, all those other guys step up, you know, guys on Miami step up. Then you can see Jokic not being in the optimal uh, lineup. But yeah, it's just one of those things. I like route two, you know, not putting him in a captain, just getting different in a captain and having Jokic in the utility spot. Uh, so there's three options there with him, but obviously it's Jokic. He looks fantastic. Once again, really like Jamal Murray in the captain spot. Uh, went off for 51 and a half in that first game. I guess a little bit of a letdown game for 42 and a half, you know, seven to 15, three of eight from three, but still 42 and a half fancy points. He's been very, very solid. So I, I do like the upside there with Jamal Murray. Obviously not as big as Jokic, but if Jokic has a relatively quiet game or just an average game, Jamal Murray has a really solid game. Um, Jamal Murray is obviously going to be a more optimal captain, especially for $4,000 less. MPJ, it'll be interesting to see what his ownership's like. Uh, did not play well. Do I do think they end up benching him in the second half there for Bruce Brown, which only led to 26 minutes, two of eight. I mean, he's one of those guys who can have those games. As you can see here, where did it happen? It happened here in this Phoenix series. Um, I think that last game he got benched. And then going into the Lakers series, he, he started out very fantastic to see 37 29 41 33 38 into that miami first game and then 12 so he's one of those guys he kind of gets you know hot and cold streaky uh but he has double double upside and i do like him as like a, a sneaky captain play this if he can go for like 40 you know 35 to 40 fancy points um he could definitely sneak into the optimal captain play so i do really like mpj a lot here especially if his ownership's gonna be a little bit down because of his last game and gordon um Minutes are there. It, it just comes down to how aggressive is he going to be. If he's super aggressive, you know, he could go for one of these type games in that last game versus the Lakers. Obviously more of a kind of an outlier game, but he should float anywhere between 24 to like 30, 32 fancy points. So for that reason, I do think he's a solid contrarian play there in the mid-range who allows you to get different and make a different lineup if you get to him. because Most people don't. KCP, kind of the same thing. Uh, was on fire that whole Lakers series. Kind of, you know, from the Phoenix series into the Lakers series, the last few games, the Phoenix series, the last two into the first, what, pretty much the whole Lakers series. He was actually pretty solid uh, going for around like 25 to 25 plus fancy points per game. Past few games, he's really struggled from, uh, was it four of 12 from the field? So obviously not great at all. One of three, one of three. So I do like him as a bounce back candidate. If he knocks down some threes, he can get some rebounds, can get some assists, he can get some steals as well. He can easily pay off that price tag. And it'd be a nice pivot play off of a, a presumably chalky Bruce Brown. He's always pretty chalky. People are going to chase him getting 27 minutes. 
That only happened because MPJ was terrible, and so they went to Bruce Brown, but that's one of the routes. It's like if MPJ doesn't hit a shots, they could look to Bruce Brown off the bench. So both of them are, you know, Bruce Brown is definitely viable, definitely in play, but if he's going to be massive, massive chalk compared to KCP, I'd rather get to KCP. Jeff Green, more of your salary relief guy, you know, should see anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Just hasn't been very productive in these playoffs so far, so he's just more of a dart throw play. Same thing with Christian Brown. Really wasn't playing much until that last game where he actually had just pretty much a stealing game. Three of three from the field, three steals, three assists, a rebound. So he's an absolute dart throw. If you wanted to, sure, you could take, you know, land on him, but I don't expect him to have that type of game uh, again. And then moving on to the Miami side, Jimmy Butler. It's just one of those things. It's weird that it just seems like once out of four games, once out of every five games, he has this game where he he just does nothing. Like he sits in the corner, becomes more of just like a passer non-aggressive, uh, you know, he'll get to his jumper and he'll just pump fake like five times and pass it out. It, it makes no sense. You know, there's got to be something going on in these games where it's like either his ankle injury is really, really hurting him um, or he's just thinking about other stuff and it, it's just messing with him because we heard that his, his dad might not be okay, but he did this that last game versus Denver. He still went for 21, 9, and 4, 40 fancy points with him just being not aggressive at all. Um so, yeah, it's just interesting to see because he did it once. He did it in that last game there versus Denver. He did it one time versus Boston. Um, he also did it, I think, at least once versus the Knicks as well, where he, uh, I think it was, I'm trying to find it here, sorry. And it's one of those things where it's like he still goes for, like, just a massive amount of fantasy points, but it's like he's just not aggressive. I think it was this one here. Where he only shot, yeah, it was this one. He, he only shot the ball 12 times. Still went for 52 because he had four steals. It's just one of those things that's like, even when he's not aggressive, he still makes up for it. So what, I guess my long-winded thing is I really like Jimmy. Um, really like him as a captain play. Really, really like him as a utility spot play. Uh, so once again, going to be super heavy on Bam and Jimmy. Probably in the utility spot plays, get different at captain, and then try to pay for some salary relief. Bam. He's been super solid the first two games. You know, he stayed out of foul trouble. He was super aggressive that first game. They wanted him to shoot. It worked out where Bam had a good game, but they still lost for the Nuggets. And then the last game, he was actually pretty just solid all around. So, yeah, Bam's really stepped it up the past two games. Uh, he's known to get in foul trouble or have some bad games. So, I'd say pump the brakes. I think he's a fine option. I'd just rather get to Jimmy or pray down. But Bam is definitely there. Caleb Martin uh, with Kevin Love into the starting lineup. Caleb Martin has moved to the bench. Uh, came off the bench, played 21 minutes before, you know, he went insane during the Boston series. Uh, he, you know, in that next series, he should see about mid-20s minutes. He can, you know, still go for like 25, 30 if he's having a really solid game. But he's more of a contrarian play option. Like, he's probably going to be pretty low-owned. So if you want to get different, him and Aaron Gordon are probably the main two guys to get to, even though you don't love their price tags, but they're there. Tyler Hero, um, you know, he got ruled out, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to rule in right before uh, this game starts. If that happens... Make sure to stay updated with me on my Twitter and Patreon because that's where I'll have all my updates about, you know, what happens if Tyler Hero gets ruled in. Gabe Vincent uh, with Tyler Hero ruled out, most likely. Um, really like him. He should see 30-plus minutes if he stands out of foul trouble and if he's shooting okay, um, which he has been the past two games. So I don't know if I would chase. I think he's a fine play. It's just one of those things. He is kind of scoring dependent at times, as we saw last game. Uh, you know, 23 real-life points, two steals were pretty much his whole fancy point thing. So... I like him. He's a solid play. I think I'd still rather get to Kyle Lowry, even though his minutes are you know, not a guarantee. He should see mid-20s minutes. Sometimes he's productive. Sometimes he's not. Um, but yeah, that's what you're getting for a guy at 4,800. I think he's a very fine play. Struess, I in the first, I didn't place the second slate. I, I forgot to put a lineup in. I was not able to. But the first slate, the first game here, game one, Dude, we went 0 of 10 for me. 0 of 10. And then, of course, the second game, he starts 4 of 10, 29 and a half fantasy points. It's like, really? Come on. But I, that's kind of what you're going to get in. Either he's going to hit his shots, he's going to get you mid-20s fantasy points, or he's not, and he's going to go for, like, 15. So that's this risk there with Struis. I think he's a fine play. Same thing with Duncan. It's just one of those things where he'll play anywhere from, like, 15 to 20, 25, depending on how he's shooting. Another fine play. Don't mind him. Um, they just really need to hit their shots. And who else we got here? You know, we just went over Duncan. Sorry about that. Hi, Smith. Not sure why he was mega chalk. You know, 23 minutes that first game. We knew the late, or we knew the, the Heat needed to switch things up. They put in Kevin Love in the starting lineup, which obviously meant that High Smith was not going to get much run. And that's what happened. So I'm not sure why a lot of people didn't switch off of him. I guess they're getting risky, but 
yeah, he's just an uh, absolute dart throw play, kind of like a Christian Brown, and he's just he's a thousand dollars more uh, more expensive than Christian Brown. So I think the high Smith's totally out of play unless you're playing 150 lineups and you want to throw him in a few. And then Cody Zeller, or excuse me, not Cody Zeller, screw him. Uh, Kevin Love, first game I played Kevin Love was an absolute shark, you know, shark move. Kevin Love was like 15% owned. A lot of people took that risk, got a DNP. What happens? Starts in game two, which obviously didn't play game two, and he went for 25. It's just super frustrating stuff. Uh, you know, it, the chalk donkeys get rewarded. It's the second game, but the first game when people took a risk, the sharks, no one got rewarded. It's just like, come on, man. But yeah, if he starts again, he should stay anywhere from 15 minutes to, I guess, 20 now. You know, he did not play that well, but still went for, you know, he played 22 minutes, which is the most he's played since the Knicks series. Uh, but before that, in the Boston series, he's only seen 15 minutes max. So it would be interesting, interesting to see if he gets those extra minutes in that second half there. Um, but yeah, if he does, I think he's a solid value play. He's probably going to be massive chalk, but as of right now, he's looking like the best value play under $4,000. And then Cody Zeller's there. If you want to take an absolute dart throw on him, you can, but you don't feel great about that. And then for the early look core plays, as I said, um, right now, really liking, liking to get different uh, at the captain spot. Maybe a guy like MPJ. Well, you know, Let's see if we just throw him in there. Let's throw an MPJ in there. Jokic, Jimmy, really hard not to throw them in there. Obviously, you have 3,900 left over. Not a lot to like. It's going to lead you to a guy like Kevin Love, which it will probably be a chalky build. Or you can get a little bit different uh, if you want to do the $1,000 strategy, which I've talked about before, which did win multiple times in that Boston series where you take a guy that's just, you know, a random guy. Let's, I'd say pick a random guy, but a guy who has a chance enough as an injury, if there's foul trouble, he could get in. So let's just say... Let's just say Cody Zeller. You know, he's been god-awful. Not sure if we'll get much run today. He's been uh, just absolutely horrendous. But, you know, if Bam gets in foul trouble, I just don't think they can go super small trying to guard Jokic. So you can see him getting, you know, maybe a few extra minutes, maybe 14. You know, he could get you. And he's minimum price. So it's one of those things. Usually you take a minimum price guy who usually doesn't really play, has no chance of playing. But Cody Zeller gets a few minutes. And it's like if he gets a couple rebounds, a dunk or two, you know, he could really help pay off. Um, he could really help you take down. So that could be a route because it opens up uh, 5,300, which allows you to get two guys like a Brown, a Lowry, Struess, you know, Robinson, uh, maybe even pay up for a guy like KCP. So it does really open up some things for you. And it's one of those things that it does have that optimal strategy being able to win. So especially if in this scenario, if, um, you know, one of the, the higher guys, I guess, let me just, Take that back. Uh, but yeah, MPJ, Captain, Jokic, Utility, Jimmy Butler, Utility. And if you wanted to make it a little bit different of a lineup, let's say, you know, Fade Butler. Don't love that, but, let, you know, Fade Butler, and you want to go to guys who are going to step up, maybe like a Lowry, maybe like a Bam. You can go with that if you want to get different from Jimmy. But I, I like Jimmy as a bounce back. He's just just an integral part of this team where he's just too too good. Um, you can always take out Jokic, put in Jamal Murray, uh, MPJ, and then maybe a third score, maybe like a Bruce Brown, you know, trying to make up for that lack of production from Jokic. So those are the kind of the routes there. Um, but yeah, right now, really trying to focus on building around this lineup I have right here, MPJ captain, Jokic, Utility, Jimmy Utility, and going from there. So I'll have updates on my Twitter and Patreon, link down below. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.